Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Coach McVeigh Show. I'm JB Long, joined by Demarco Farr. Happy Thanksgiving week to you, my Happy friend. Happy Thanksgiving. Got the turkey ready to go. Turkey is it stuffing or dressing in your house? Both. Both. See, good all answer. Of, all of the above. I love it. All of it. <laughs> and then shortly thereafter, the Rams will be aboard their plane and heading to Green Bay to take on the Green Bay Packers. And fresh off his bye, here's the yeah. head coach of your Los Angeles Rams, Sean McVeigh. How was your week away? It was good. It was good to be able to get away. Um, you know, I think uh, everybody could have used uh, just a chance to get recharged refreshed, rejuvenated, and being with the guys today, it was good to be able to get back in here, and they got a good look in their eyes, and we got a great challenge ahead of us. I heard uh, this was a well-positioned buy for your football team. Regardless of result of last game, this was a perfect time for a buy for your football team. I think so. I mean, it's it's when the buy was, so, uh, you know, that's that's when it was, so we're going to handle it that way, and I did feel like it was appropriate. You know, you look at it, after you play 10 games, there's a lot of toll that it takes on these players. Um, They'll come back. Uh, they came back today. They felt they feel good, um, and I think they're excited about the opportunity we have to go against a great football team in Green Bay. How did you put the extra time to use when you weren't recharging? It was really more just trying to get some rest, get away from it, you know, being able to look at some of the things over the first 10 games, and like I've mentioned before, be solution oriented. You know, there's a lot of good things that we've done, um, but as of late, you know, we expect to be able to play better. And so, looking at those things, um, then also just some of the new moving parts that we have, you know, being able to get some of these guys implemented in the right way, being able to utilize their skill sets. So, it was a balance of both. Uh, trying to be able to detach, get some rest, spend some time with my family, my fiance, but uh, you know, then be able to get a little bit of work done as well. So you're smiling. You can't detach. This is football. Yeah. You're in the middle of football yeah, season. It's good though. I mean, yeah. I, I love what I do. You yeah. know, so that's a, that's a good thing. But uh, I think the balance is key and critical. Uh, being able to shut down so that when you come back, you know, you truly are recharged and rejuvenated, and, and that's exactly how I feel. How does a coach do it? Do you start from week one and just watch every play? every game no just... you know what i would say this to marco we try to stay up to date on our self scout you know so you know you're constantly going through that i mean i think before you even prepare for the upcoming opponent you got to know what you're doing make sure that you get your house right first and foremost and so that's an ongoing process for us but i think when you look at the totality of it the main thing that you're looking at is okay what are some of the things that we can really do better when you combine all 10 games and then also most importantly it's okay we got some moving parts with some of the injuries are some guys that um, you know we've acquired and, and how can we best fit these guys in in a seamless transition for these last seven games but most importantly the Green Bay game to start off. I'm sure the answer is everything but what are some of those areas that you would like to be better at in this stretch run? Well I think the number one thing is I mean everybody talks about it but we've got 10 games of tangible evidence it's about turnovers and takeaways other than points over the course of time there's no better indicator of winning and losing football games for our team uh, when we've been even or even just plus one or more than that, we're 7-0. and And when we're in the negatives, we're 0-3. And so uh, that right there is a great reflection of the things that we talk about all the time. How important is it? How much more of an emphasis can we make on it? Whether it's attacking the football in our coverage units or on defense and making sure we do a great job taking care of it offensively or when we're in the return phases of our kicking game. I remember when I was a player, it was all over the board. Take care of the ball, you know, take care of the ball. Is it something that you have to reinforce with yourself so you can reinforce it with your players on practice. Totally. We got the right kind of guys, DeMarco. We get what we emphasize and how much more of an emphasis can we make on it? How intentional can we be about providing that clarity, the drill work that goes in alignment with, hey, the practice preparation then can equal game reality with the emphasis that we're making. But, you know, it comes down to the situations, taking care of the football, and really more importantly, just being efficient, snap in and snap out. And all we ask of these guys is to compete to their very best of their ability every single day. And, and you know, I think the challenge that we talked about is check that you know can you check that box that at the end of the day you competed to the best of your ability you try to be where your feet were planted you tried to get better today to be a great teammate to be the best player you can be for this team and ultimately uh, you can go then compete with a quieted mind and that's all you can really do you and I both know that you know mm -hmm. all we can do is compete to the best of our ability we're going to come out swinging and uh, and we're looking, looking forward to being able to compete again. How about the structure this week? You are coming off the bye. You also have that Thanksgiving holiday, but you've touched on a couple of new players, Vaughn OBJ most notably, that I know you're anxious to get out on the grass in the practice field 
any extra hours available to you this week in that pursuit? Well, I think those guys will spend a little bit of extra time, but, you know, Vaughn's done a great job getting up to speed. Odell, we've kind of had to onboard in a, you know, accelerated fashion, mm -hmm. if you will. But today we wanted to, you know, be in Monday, get the guys in, being able to kind of just see where they're at, making sure that they were able to detach as well and really focus on ourselves. And then uh, we'll have a normal weekly preparation. We'll just move thing, things up Thursday morning to be able to make sure that they can have their time with their families. But our rhythm and routine will try to stay consistent. You know, I, I was surprised that Odell Beckham Jr. actually got out there on Monday night. I mean, that's a fast turnaround, one team to the next, and you're using the guy. Was that because Robert's down and you had to use him? Yes. Yeah. It was. It was kind of it, – it's really – it's a credit to Odell. I mean, to be able to get lined up and even play a handful of snaps like he was – He's a really smart, conscientious guy. You know, if you said you're going to get him in there and you're only going to really have one practice with him that's not even a full speed practice and he's going to go out there, have a couple catches, play a big role in, in some of the things that we were able to do and the little bit of success that we were able to have, uh, I think that's a real credit to him. We'll look to build on that. But uh, it's, it's definitely uh, we were kind of forced into that just based on the nature of some of the situations we were dealing with. How would you frame reasonable expectations for week two in terms of how far along he is with yourself and Matthew Stafford? Yeah, I think we're going through that right now. I think, um, you know, it's going to be a day-by-day -day process, but there will be some moving parts. But ultimately, there's no excuses. You know, we've got to be able to get him up to speed as quickly as possible. What exactly does that look like? That's something that we're really putting our heads together as a coaching staff and figuring out the way not only to accentuate Odell's skill sets, but also make sure you're taking advantage of Cooper and Van, getting Ben Skoranek going, obviously Higgs at the the tight end spot maybe a couple of those other guys you know and then the running back position as well so it's all encompassing to everybody and figuring out how we can kind of uh, match up the different personnel groupings and, and take advantage of utilizing you know all the guys that we'll be able to have active offensively is is something that we're working through right now you can see it when you're up close i mean that guy's got some short area quickness and he can go and he's bigger than i thought yeah he is he's he's wired the right way i mean he's a special player special mm -hmm. talent um you know i've really enjoyed these lat this you know week and a half or whatever it's been kind of being around him and I think he's excited about the opportunity to just take it a day at a time and, and just build on some of the things that he was able to do uh, in his first game against the Niners. In that whirlwind of a week that was the week leading up to San Francisco, I imagine you didn't also have full time to process the injury to Robert Woods, what that meant to you personally, <laughs> yeah. emotionally. How did that sink in over the bye, and how's he doing? It didn't sink in good. Uh, you know, I, I think uh, he's doing really well. Um, you know, he's, I think he's at peace with it. He's going to attack his rehab the right way. Mm -hmm. uh, surgery will be coming up for him shortly, but he's such a special part of this team, uh, this organization. He's meant so much to us for the last handful of years. You don't ever replace a player like him, but there will be some moving parts that we've got to figure out how to kind of fill a major void that was left. Um, but it's, it's a bummer. But, uh, you know, these are parts of the – this is the nasty part of the game you know having to fill some of those voids that are left by you know big time injuries of a player like Robert Woods and so that's something that we've got to be able to do and, and fortunately you get an Odell and some other guys will be asked to step up and um, it's gonna be a great challenge but I think guys will be uh, you know willing to accept that challenge that's what I like I, I when I heard it I threw the phone I broke it I was mad but hey did you really break your phone well, yeah, theoretically, it okay. bounced. But yeah. there's reps out there for other guys now. Yes. The season just doesn't stop for one guy. There's reps for other people now. Exactly. And and really, just like anything else, I think we've got to have good agility as a coaching staff, figuring out how to piece that together. The way that you're able to operate with Robert Woods uh, is going to be different than how we move forward. It doesn't mean that there's not going to be some similarities, but all the different things that he was able to do for us, you certainly don't replace that. Um, and so those are the things that you're excited about you know attacking that challenge the right way uh, but you're really bummed out for uh, one of our captains one of our leaders one of the guys that's kind of been one of the heartbeats of this football team uh, and I think the best way you can honor him is by playing like he did let's reset the uh, quarterback position beyond the midway point here why do you think the last couple of games may have looked differently for Matthew Stafford in the offense than the previous ones had well I think the Tennessee game there was a couple plays that were very uncharacteristic you know you look at when he's trying to just make a play and it's one of those unlucky deals where throw it right to long and he ends up making a good play and then you know Bayard ended up doing a great job on kind of a quick game concept he actually just recognized that he was supposed to be an inside hook player and he buzzed out to the flat so those two plays were really good but I thought there was a, still a lot a positive we just didn't punch it in the red zone and then you look at it against the Niners the ops were really minimal you know the first one it was just a little miscommunication on the first drive 
The second one, I mean, that's one of the freakiest tips I've ever seen. We're throwing a screen, it's a man coverage, kind of bounces up right to Jimmy Ward. Matthew put it in a good location, um, and I thought he actually did a nice job against the Niners. You know, it's just when you have four drives in the first half, the third drive goes for a great scoring drive. I thought he did an excellent job on that seven play sequence, being able to put us in position to score a touchdown. That was a huge third down and long conversion that he and Higby connected on for the touchdown. Then the fourth drive, you know, we're driving right down the field. You go nine plays, we have a freak deal where we kind of snap it back on a second and six. Now it turns into a second and 11. Then you end up kind of just trying to overcome that. We have a missed field goal. Those are your four drives. And then coming out of the half, you know, we, we fall short on, on three situations um, on third down, two of which were drops. And so then the next thing you know, you're looking up and it's a 31-7 football game. And so I thought Matthew actually played, did what he could against the 49ers. Uh, that's why it's the greatest team sport that there is. I have total trust and confidence that we'll play better around him. I know I can certainly put us in better spots, and, uh, and that's where our focus will be. There, just, there seems to be a sentiment of staying the course here, where this is a long season, yeah. and you don't want to suffer from recency bias because a couple of bad breaks have gone against you. With all that extra time to think about it, are you kind of guarding against that, too? Like, hey, we don't need to reinvent the wheel here. Totally. I think you want to not allow overthinking to prevent yourself from being able to overcome some of these things. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the biggest thing. You know, we have to, we, we set out a football philosophy in a way that we want to operate that's in alignment with really good things occurring for us. <laughs> also, what we know is this game, I mean, sometimes things go out of your control. I mean, look around the league. I've never seen more parity that exists now since I've been coaching in this league. Um, and that's also why you have to make sure that you have your core values, your foundational principles that guide your everyday approach. You know, everybody talks about this process. Let's be committed to our process more than we've ever been while also not being so stringent in our ability to be able to adjust or adapt if need be. And so you're exactly right, JB. I think that, you know, let's look at it for what it is. Let's see why we didn't get the results that we wanted to. And let's try to make sure that we're intentional about correcting those things. And then eventually you hopefully, you know, you're hopeful that the results will take care of themselves over time if the process and the focus on those things throughout the course of the week and the preparation is in alignment with, you know, doing things that I think this team is capable of more times than not. I don't know if you're like me. His voice is in my head. When you say humility is a week away, that's mm -hmm. what I keep thinking every time I see some of these big upsets. Totally. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's amazing. I mean, yeah. you see why Vegas is doing so well. Right. I mean, this, <laughs> no doubt. But it's, it's also a credit to the Com the competitive balance that exists in this league. You know, there's good players, there's good coaches, there's mentally tough teams that find a way to respond after some setbacks. There's teams that maybe have been, you know, a little bit down that find a way to play their best ball. And so, you know, for us, it's how consistently can we play at our best level. And I do believe that if we do that, good things will happen more times than not for this team because of the players and the people we have. About the uh, element of toughness there, you kind of touched on a little bit, but it seems like there's been a physical challenge presented by your two most recent losses. I feel like you have a physical group that can answer that bell. Do yep. they maybe just need a week to kind of rally up around that and get back to it? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think, you, you know, you give credit to those other teams. They did a nice job. But but I think, you know, when you really look at it in its totality, I mean, it, it comes down to the turnovers and then being able to get off the grass, being able to stay on the grass. You know, it, I, could, I could go through a gauntlet of things, but it's really about, all right, hey, let's play efficient football, snap in and snap out. Mm -hmm. Let's be physical. Let's not beat ourselves with some of the penalties that we've really haven't had this season but over the last couple weeks we've had more that makes it more difficult to overcome some of those things whether you put yourself behind the sticks offensively or whether you give them free first downs defensively you know those are the things that take no talent to be able to correct and we got the right kind of guys that are conscientious enough to to get it fixed and and hopefully we'll see that reflected in our play as we move forward going back to takeaways and, and turnovers your quarterback if there is a QB error I hate even saying that but if there is our with a veteran like him, it seems like he already knows what he did wrong before he gets to you on the bench. Totally. Would you be surprised if he didn't coming off the field? I think, uh, you know, I think what you've uh, learned to appreciate as the time has gone on and we've spent more time together, DeMarco, is how smart, how sharp he is, and how quickly he can correct to be able to move forward the right way. And so um, there hasn't been a time that it's occurred where, you know, he's coming off and he's not already aware of what are those things. Now we talk about what can we apply or how can we be in better situations to be able to learn from it, you know. And, and that's the best part about Matthew is I think it enables us to be able to move forward faster because of the extreme ownership, the accountability that exists. But then also, there are some things that have occurred that are just occupational hazards, whether it's a tip ball, mm -hmm. different things like that. So, um, 
definitely it's not always on the quarterback. They have a huge influence on the things that can occur, but Matthew's ability to be able to auto-correct and, and understand what it is definitely accelerates that process. I think that's called blank happens, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah football. That's exactly yeah. right. <laughs> on the other side of the football, what did you uh, take away from Von Miller's first 45 snaps as a Ram? I thought he did a nice job, JB. I mean, he definitely, you felt his presence. Um, you know, to their credit, you know, we didn't get them in a lot of those known passing mm-hmm. situations where you really get a chance to pin your ears back and come off the football, but I thought he was physical at the point of attack defending the run um, and you can see why he's a special player and I think he's only going to build on it but we've got to be able to earn those ops to really be in an attacking mode and mindset and mentality you know defensively by you know being being efficient on the early downs is that rough for you as a head coach I mean introducing two big stars to your football team this is the way we do things but here's two other guys coming in I don't think so. You know, these guys are great guys. You know, first and foremost, they're great players, but they're, you know, first and foremost, they're great guys, and they also happen to be great players. And so um, they've come in. They've embraced it. I think the guys have embraced them. You know, we're just getting them up to speed, but the one thing that you can appreciate, they both have a great look in their eye. They've both been willing to accept the way that we operate and the way that we do things. And I think the best part about the way we do things is there's a shared ownership and autonomy that exists between players and coaches. This isn't like we're always dictating the terms. I think the best team teams are player led where they have an ownership they have a say in what we do and I think all the players that I've been around would say they appreciate that uh, it's a luxury that I think these guys have earned and, and those guys fit in that category for sure the bye week uh, allowed me to hear a little bit more clearly the cry from the fan base and maybe some of the media about please keeping Jalen Ramsey on the opponent's best player I'm not sure mm-hmm. how much of that crossed your radar none but, uh, yeah I, I stay uh, you know it, it, I think, uh, you know, in a lot of instances, uh, what I would say is we are on the same page in that regard, uh, but there's a lot of moving parts and Mm -hmm. it's not quite as simple as, you know, just do that. Um, What kind of coverages are you playing? How does that thin out the integrity of it? We're not always playing man coverage where you can just be sticky on guys. There's an element of you need to be able to mix it up, play some zones, play some mans. Um, In order for Jalen to be able to be that versatile piece, you still have to have other people that can fill those voids when he goes elsewhere. And so uh, I got you, but uh, there's a lot of layers to it. (laughs) And the reason it comes up this week is because Devontae Adams and the Packers Mm -hmm. provide just about every opponent does, but a very clear number one on the opposing side where you could say, okay, we might see this matchup a lot this week. Yeah, and I think that's something that we'll talk about as we really Mm -hmm. dive deep into the game planning element. He is a great player. I I have tremendous respect for Devontae. His ability to be able to be moved all over the formation, his ability to be able to beat bump, to be able to beat free access, be able to go short, intermediate down the field, Mm -hmm. create after the catch. Um, He's one of those guys that can do it all. And uh, he's wired to separate. If you said, let's just talk about all the traits and characteristics that you're looking for in a receiver, Devontae Adams checks all the boxes. His production speaks for itself. The rapport between he and Aaron is is unbelievable. I mean, you look at just how on the same page they are, both in rhythm and then off schedule. Um, And and those are some things that you definitely want to be mindful of. And and Devontae is a a special player, and we need to have a great plan for him. What about going there to Green Bay, to Lambeau, playing there? Special place for you? It's awesome. I I think it's a a historic venue. Uh, Being there last year, obviously, that that represented the end of our season. Mm -hmm. Every single year is a new year, but uh, they're a great football team again. You know, we're a competitive team that we expect to go up there and and, and shoot our shot to compete to the best of our ability, but uh, it'll be fun to have a full stadium. You know, that's one of the things that Mm -hmm. makes the NFL so great is uh, these environments, these atmospheres, and and Lambeau is right at the top of the list uh, in terms of what is uh, one of the things that makes the NFL so unique and special. How much bearing will that matchup from last postseason have on your game plan, given how much has changed, be it a quarterback for you, a defensive coordinator for them, and, yeah. and everything in between? I think, you know, there's an element of it still is a player's game, and there is some continuity, even though, you know, Joe's doing a great job running the defense, there's still some principles that they carried from Coach Pettin uh, that you do see. There's a lot of carryover from a personnel standpoint, and then there is offensive continuity, and so that film will definitely be beneficial because there is a lot of foundational principles that are similar similar to the way that we operated under Brandon's leadership and now with Raheem. And so there is a lot of, uh, there's a lot of valuable parts. And then with Mo Drayton taking over special teams, he's carried over a lot of the same systems, uh, even though we're different with Coach Joe D. So uh, there is definitely a, a valuable part of that game that, that you'll make sure you take into account. It's every single week, we're like bumping in the people that used to work for you. Now they have with other us. jobs. They with, us. with us. Okay, yeah. with you. But yep. now they're on the other side. Yep. Does this ever get old to you? <laughs> 
No, because uh, I think what you appreciate is what a small network of people it is that are fortunate enough to be in this business. And because I think we've done uh, fairly well, those guys have grown and, and done a great job in their new ventures. And mm -hmm. Matt's doing an outstanding job. You know, I mean, his his start to his tenure is as good as anybody in the history of the league. I'm so happy for him, unless it means that we're going against one another. <laughs> so we're going to try to do the best that we can to, to go compete and, and, and give them a, a tough matchup. And then Joe's done a great job leading the defense. You know, Joe is a value part of this staff. We have a long-standing relationship. He was the assistant head coach here, did a great job coaching on the defensive side of the ball. Both those guys, and there's other people that are on that staff that I know, but both those guys mean a lot to me, and they were instrumental in a lot of the good things that have occurred here. Looking ahead to practice this week, how did you come out of San Francisco health-wise with the extra week to rest some bumps and bruises? We came out good. You know, we're in a good position right now, JB, so that's all you can ask for. Um, you know, you're looking at it, you're saying, all right, hopefully we get Double D back in action, uh, having another week of recovery and rest. I think Darius will feel another week better uh, coming off of his ankle injury, and so don't expect to miss anybody, um, and that's a positive thing for us, you know, going into your 11th game of the season. You know, I hope. I mean, coming off the bye, um, always fun. You get recharged. You got another game coming up. You came off a loss. I bet you can't wait to get to Sunday. Yeah, you can't wait. But I think also, just like we've talked to the team about, you know, you can't, you know, play on Sunday right mm -hmm. now. So we want to be where our feet are planted. We want to stack blocks the right way to give ourselves the best opportunity to go play our best ball, our brand of football, good complimentary football, because that's what it's going to take to go give ourselves a chance to win this football game against an excellent team. I always think about rookies during the bye, too, because their heads have probably been spinning ever since mm. draft and OTAs. Uh, the bye week kind of represents an end of a college season of sorts in yeah. terms of yeah. length. Um, but I know you're expecting big things from the likes of Robert Rochelle, Ernest Jones, Ben Skoranek for you to get to where you're trying to go the rest of the way. Yeah, and I think those guys are mature rookies. You know, I think, um, you know, They've got to really lean on the veteran leadership that we have. They've got to know how to establish a rhythm and a routine. Are we able to help in that? No doubt about it. But I think part of being a pro's pro is learning, asking the right questions from guys that set the example, set the tone, taking care of your body, establishing a rhythm and routine that's in alignment with being able to sustain over a 17-game season, then hopefully you give yourself a chance to play after that. So it has been long, but all those guys that you mentioned that we're counting on are mature beyond their years, and, uh, and I trust that they use that week the right way I, he doesn't Benny Sko doesn't strike me as a rookie at all like this this whole league thing seems like it's not too big for him yeah like it, he's born to do it yeah I, I agree with that I feel the same way about Ernest and I think Robert Rochelle's done a great job especially when you think about some of the things that he's had to play through with the wrist injury getting up to speed uh, you know probably faster than any of us anticipated and so all three of those guys have done a nice job and expect them to play their best ball down the stretch Wishing you a happy Thanksgiving, Coach. Thanks. You too, guys. Appreciate you spending the time with us. Looking forward to our trip to Green Bay. Have a great week of practice. And to all of you, happy holidays, happy Thanksgiving. And we'll see you for Week 12 at the Green Bay Packers.